foundation established in memory of one of the victims of September 11th has given hope to young athletes. Mari Ray Soper was on her way to coach a college gymnastics team in California when her plane crashed into the Pentagon. But her dedication to gymnastics lives on. The Marie Ray Soper Gymnastics Memorial Fund has raised more than $75,000 to save troubled gymnastics programs. Uh, she grew up in the northwest suburbs, became a college competitor, and coached kids all her adult life. The Joni Lum has the story. When girls twist and wobble on the balance beam, the memory of one woman provides a safety net. The Palatine Gymnastics Club has a new set of bars and a soft place to land because of the Mary Ray Soper Memorial Gymnastics Fund. Mary Ray Soper was a Washington attorney on her way to the University of California at Santa Barbara for a new job the morning of September 11, 2001. Hijackers crashed American Airlines Flight 77 into the Pentagon, killing all 64 people on board. Soper was one of them. She had resigned from a law firm taken a 70% pay cut to coach the university's gymnastics team. She never arrived, and the team was cut from the university budget. Athletic programs across the country teeter financially, but Mary Ray Soper's fund is coming to the rescue. This spring, the Palatine Park District received $20,000 to buy state-of-the-art training and safety equipment. She's our fallen angel. Our spring gymnastics show has been named in her honor. So from now on, it will be known as the Mary Ray Soper Gymnastics Show. Mary Ray was on Palatine's very first team more than 20 years ago. She cared about every girl that she worked with. And she always let them know that they were capable of doing what they were trying to do. And that was just Mary Ray. Soper was not a gifted gymnast, but she worked harder to become one of the best. Iowa State's team captain and most valuable player. Her mother says a strong will makes a good gymnast. It requires a focus, it requires extreme discipline, and it requires you to fail a lot before you ever succeed. There are numerous athletic awards named after Soper. Marion Kaminick has heard from young gymnasts around the world. I got an email from a gymnast this year who received the Mary Ray Soper Gymnastics Award and it was for the gymnast most passionate about the sport and I, I don't even know who gave it out but she wrote to tell me that uh, it meant so much to her because Mary Ray had been her coach. Soper was also a Navy lawyer and was buried at Arlington National Cemetery. In the last two years the Soper family has received countless artifacts, a rubbing from the cemetery memorial bearing her name, a college banner made in her honor, half a dozen American flags. Soper served her country, but her legacy endures in these girls. She's just been a really great role model for me. Her picture hangs in the front gym. That's where I work out for high school. And I see her every day, and it's such an inspiration. Joni Lum, WGN News. The Memorial Fund was initially established to save gymnastics, uh, a, a, the athletic program at, at California Santa Barbara, where uh, Soper was to begin work. That program was cut from the university budget last year, so the money was redirected to existing gymnastics programs. Soper's mother wants people to remember her daughter, but most of all, she wants Americans to never forget what happened to this country two years ago. It's uh, 6.56. We're going to... unveiled a memorial on Naperville's Riverwalk. The 11-foot high sculpture is a tribute to all the victims, but especially one of their own. WGN's Julie Unruh is live in Naperville this evening with more. Julie. Commander Dan Shanauer was a military intelligence officer at the Pentagon when he died. He was from Naperville, and today his hometown unveiled a park in his name. Take a look here behind me. Many are getting a glimpse of it for the very first time. The message earlier this afternoon, from this day forward, this will be a place to remember the high price of war. Patriotic music, the Pledge of Allegiance, and prayer showered Naperville in a tribute to one of their own. Commander Dan Shanauer died on September 11, 2001. He died defending this nation. He did so willingly. He knew that freedom was not free. Dan Shanauer died as one of our true heroes. We wanted to remember those who died two years ago while recognizing the tremendous price 
that comes with our freedom. Two years and $250,000 later, the city's hard work was unveiled for all to see. The wall of faces representing the thousands who died that day. In one sculpture, a metal beam from the World Trade Center, rubble from the Pentagon, and Pennsylvania granite representing the heroic acts aboard flight number 93. Shanauer's mom spoke publicly for the first time since her son's death. This place represents pain, but also triumph and celebration. Today is a celebration of things our son believed in. The people of Naperville came out in droves. Perhaps a thousand lined the city's river walk to witness history of a different sort in the making. History is in the making every day, no matter what. You're part of history that it's not something that happens far away in Pennsylvania or far away in New York or far away. It happens right here. Every day they are living history. We tend to forget in our day-to-day, -day, but this really brings it back and helps you remember what it's all about. We didn't know anybody personally. But it was just so dramatic that um, we need to remember. Remember, in Commander Shanauer's words, freedom is not free. Now, the mayor himself at this memorial stands as a reminder to all that, quote, we are people who can forgive but will not forget. We're live in Naperville, Julie Unruh, WGN News. Julie, thank you. For many who survived the horror of the September 11th attacks, the memory is still painfully fresh. Later in this newscast, a man who escaped the World Trade Center still feeling the tragic impact of that day. And tonight, we have a survivor's story. WGN's Muriel Clare talked to an Aurora man who says he will never forget the horrific lessons he learned after escaping the World Trade Center. The pain's still there, and, it, and, you, and you feel it every day. Like the sound and the spray from Grant Park's Buckingham Fountain, Joe Dittmar's pain is easily recognizable when he recalls the morning of September 11. Even now, two years later, you can see it in his eyes and hear it in his voice as he chokes back the tears. It was just gruesome, just absolutely gruesome, horrible, something that you shouldn't have to see. Joe Dittmar, a property insurance specialist, was in New York attending a meeting in the World Trade Center's South Tower on the morning the terrorists struck. Only seven of the 54 people attending that meeting on the 105th floor survived. Some of those killed died while waiting on an elevator. Dittmar took the stairs. On the way down, he stopped on the 90th floor and saw for the first time the damage to the North Tower. So we saw that plane and, and, and you know, knew that it was there. Uh, but what you saw the paper and the furniture and the people falling out of the building. I watched for a little bit and I couldn't watch anymore. I turned around and I decided that I was going to leave because I couldn't take it. It would take Dittmar and two of his colleagues 50 minutes from the time they left the meeting room to get out of the building. A lot of minutes. Um, and it was, we found out after the fact, 58 minutes from the time that the building was hit to the time it collapsed, so we barely escaped. It was a life-altering experience. Since then, Dittmar has reordered his priorities. He says he is a better husband and father. He's lost 45 pounds. He's changed jobs. He's still in the insurance business, but he's working for a different company. And instead of his office being on the 28th floor of a 44-story building, he's on the 20th floor of a 28-story building. And speaking of change, Dittmar says the winds of change have swept the nation, especially in airports and other public facilities. And, you know, here we are two years later, and you hear people moaning and groaning, and how inconvenient this is. They forget? Did they forget already? Uh, I think for me, that's the part that, all, that really does hurt the most, that people may have in some way, shape, or form forgotten already. We can't afford to forget. The minute we do, the minute we let that guard down, is the minute that we're right back to being extremely vulnerable once again. Our guard has to be up 24-7. Didmar says last year this time he was struggling with the question of why he survived. He says he's convinced now that his purpose is to talk about 9-11 so that people never, ever forget all that happened on that day. Muriel Clare, WGN News. Uh, what a story. It's one we should never forget. Joe Dittmar says talking about his experience on 9-11 helps him deal with the devastating memories. 
This last summer weather should stay hot for at least another day. But Tom Skilling says some much needed rain may be on the way just in time for the weekend. He's got the full forecast coming up next.